everybody how you doing hope you're all okay well welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my back garden yep we're back in the back garden we're all back in lockdown and uh yeah so i did a couple of videos in the first lockdown i did one the sunset to no, sorry sunrise to sunset and i did one on the camera trap where i introduced you to uh, henry the hedgehog and also i did one on the bees and yeah, so we're back in the back garden and this video, I suppose, or this um, project, if you like, is inspired by two of the legendary pubcast members, Darren Knight and Gary Norman, also known as uh, RE Photography. During the first lockdown, they took up the, um, the challenge of photographing the birds in their garden with some really fantastic results, some great photos and all of that. So a lot of the hints and tips I've kind of um, taken from them really. And I just find, just sort of sitting in the, the dining room there, we can look out over the garden. And it is very kind of therapeutic, if you like. Um, just sitting there watching the birds coming and going about their everyday business. Anyway, so what I've done is I've found a couple of old branches behind the hedge here and I set them up as some perches and just put, sort of squeeze some fat ball into the back of them just to try and encourage the birds on to, to make it look a bit more natural so what I've been doing um, before this was I've just set up the camera in the dining room there focused on the feeder I got some pretty good results from that I'll put those up in a sec so you can see those but the problem is is because I focus on a certain point, trying to get them in, I was trying to get the birds in flight, just kind of landing on the thing. And although they come out okay, they're not kind of pin sharp. But for a first attempt, they're pretty good. You know, this is right out of my comfort zone here, really, to be honest. You know, I don't tend to photograph things that move around. So it's all good learning, it's all good experience. So, uh, yeah, looking forward. So I've been quite excited already with the um, results I've been getting beforehand yeah gonna crack on and uh and see what we can get Okay guys, well, I've got my little setup here. I've just drawn the curtains to a bit, just to give me a little bit of privacy so the birds can't see me um, moving around. Although they are quite quite used to us, because we, we sit here and watch them when we have breakfast and dinner and stuff. Anyways, just quickly go through the um, setup. So it's 70 to 200 on, so I'm zoomed on there's a little kind of feeding dish on the, on the feeder station there. I'm just on the tip of that because I just want to try and get the, um, the birds as they're kind of approaching the, the feeder there. What they tend to do is they'll sit on the hedge for a bit and they'll look around just to check to make sure it's all safe and then they'll fly onto the feeder and then obviously um, they'll quickly grab a seed and then scoot back off again. When you get the long tail tits they go and tend to go into the fat balls and sometimes you can get like seven or eight at one any one time on there and they just munch away on the, on the fat balls and then they'll just fly away. But on the little tray there you get like the blue tits, the cold tits, great tits, you get sparrows, you get robin, so you get quite a few different birds um, landing on there. Shutter speed wise, I'm on one two hundredth of a second. At the minute, I'll probably go faster, but I'm about to up the ISO to 400 to get that shutter speed. And the other day when I was taking some pictures, I got the ISO, I went up to like 
1600 I think, maybe over 2000. Just to get a really fast shut speed. I've put it on continuous um, shut things. So when I see the, um, the bird by the hedge there, once it starts moving, I can just click away and then hopefully I'll get a frame with the bird in flight. It was quite exciting, just sat here. Oh, here comes one now. Oh, it's just, just flew away. Oh, I think that was a long tail tip. But it's surprising. I mean, I've sat here quite a bit lately, certainly while I've been in lockdown. And uh, the birds that you get, that you don't normally see, I had a wagtail come into the garden the other day. Well, I've never seen a wagtail in the garden before. So that was really good. I said that pheasant the other day. That was nice. But when I saw that marsh tit landing, I thought, wow. So I got my book out, my good old trusty RSPB bird book. Yeah, so I just zoomed right into the tip of the feeder there. And we continue to shoot. There's not much going on at the minute, so. I'll get back to you in a bit. Okay guys, I've had a bit of activity with some long tail tits and some blue tits and I think it's a cold tit. The trouble is it's a bit like, I used to do quite a lot of fishing. I used to love going fishing. You know, I used to go with my dad and um, my dad loved his fishing. You know, that was uh, his, um, his happy place if you like. I always remember I like, used to go night fishing and um, I'd be freezing cold. I'd say, come on dad, let's go home, let's go home. No, 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 one more cast, one more cast. And like 20 casts later, oh, just one more, I can feel it, I can feel it. Just, yeah. And lo and behold, like, cast out, bang, gets a nice big chub or something. Anyway, it's a bit like this, you know, photographing the birds. You have to be really, really patient because obviously there's not much going on out there in the minute and suddenly it can all change really quick. It's a bit like when you're fishing, you can be sat there for hours, with nothing. Your little floats just there. And so it goes like that, goes like that. Boom, boom, and you're in. It's a bit like that, you, you wait, and you can see the birds, they're all flying around all over the place. Sometimes they'll go to go to the feeder, and then they'll change their mind. See, this is the problem when, you, when I'm set up on the tripod, on a fixed position, because I'm trying to get a certain shot. So if it's obviously handheld, you could be like clicking away all over the shop. But I'm not that confident at the minute to do that. Yeah, so I'm quite happy just sat here. I don't know kind of the type of shot I want. So it's just a case of persevering and I say being patient really. The other thing I might do, going back to handheld shooting, is sometimes the neighbour chucks a load of bread out into the field and um, you get loads of seagulls come over. I might copy that idea, chuck a load of bread out and then just stand in the garden. So they, they're not phased by you really. And see if I can get some shots of them in the sky. I'll tell you the other thing with the robin. They look really cute and sweet on the old Christmas cars. They a little bit of snow around them and all of that. But I'll tell you what, they're vicious ones. I was watching the other day, they chase the old sparrows right out of the garden. Don't take any nonsense. And the other day I saw a blackbird chasing a pigeon. It's all these things you never get to see. You know, you just sort of spend a bit of time watching and observing. Occasionally we get a load of starlings come down. The thing with starlings, they're always, to me, they're a bit like an underrated bird. But when you actually see one up close, they're absolutely beautiful. The colours in there are so... They're quite dark colours, but they're really gorgeous. 
And now you've got all, like your tropical birds that are really bright and colourful. But a lot of British birds are just as good. I mean, you've got goldfinch, great tit, long tailed tits, beautiful looking birds. I oh, nearly missed that. Great tip just landed there. Busy chatting to you, see. The kingfisher as well. God, that is one beautiful bird, isn't it? Jay, there's a jay a couple of doors down. Every year he must nest there. You can see him flying across. Got some starlings coming in the garden now, just pecking around in the lawn. Yeah, seems to have a bit of activity going on at the minute. Around the garden, but not on the feeder. A couple of other birds we've had in the garden in the past. I've had a little uh, black and white woodpecker. He came in once. And uh, a nuthatch. So we get quite a broad range of birds in this, in this area. And very occasionally as well, I haven't seen one for a while, we get a heron. He, he tends to land on that tree just over there. The thing I find, I don't know if you find this as well, quite often you go into the woods, I know right where we are, a lot of our woods are plantation woods, they're like the pine trees. You hardly hear any birds. You're just sat here in the garden, you can hear them chirping away. Weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm.